Okay, so in the last video we introduced the concept of differential equations and we solved a simple differential equation which went something like this dy on dx equals 3x squared plus 4x plus 1. And how we solved this was we separated the differentials and then integrated both sides and we came up with the general solution y is equal to x cubed plus 2x squared plus x plus the integration constant c. So the method here was to separate the differential to get all of the x's on one side of the equation on the right hand side and leave all the y's on the left hand side of the equation. And this made the differential equation quite straightforward to solve. So we're going to develop this concept a bit further because from now on we'll call this class of equations separable equations. Ones where we can get all of the x's or the independent variable on one side of the equation and leave the unknown function, which is a dependent variable, on the other side of the equation. So for instance we might have an equation of the form the derivative of y is equal to k times y. So in this equation we have an unknown function y of which its derivative is equal to a constant times the function itself. So writing this in differential form we have dy on dx is equal to k times y. So this is another example of a separable differential equation because to solve this the process is to get all of the y's on the one side so we can move this y downstairs to the left hand side and move all the x's so we can move this dx upstairs to the right hand side. So in turn the differential equation becomes dy on y equals k dx. So now that we have all the y's on the left and all the x's on the right we can simply then integrate both sides. And you've learned previously that integrals of this form dy on y is equal to the natural log of y and the integral of dx we've just got a constant here so it's really the integral of dx is just simply equal to x so so the constant stays at the front and formally we have integration constants on both sides but since both of these are constants we really only need to show it on one side so we can write the natural log of y is equal to kx plus an integration constant c. Okay so we haven't finished just yet because we've still got a log of y rather than y on its own. So to get y on its own I somehow have to cancel this log and the only way I can do that is to exponentiate the right hand side. So what I do is I write e and then raise it to the log of y and if I do that on the left hand side I have to do that to the right hand side as well. So I have e and then raise it to the kx plus c. So now the e and the log are opposite functions so they cancel and I'm left with y is equal to e to the kx. I'm going to write this one like this though so by e to the c. So that's just applying the index law where a to the b plus c can be written as a to the power of b multiplied by a to the power of c. And finally this e to the c here because c is a constant and e is a special constant as well a constant raised to the constant is still a constant so let's just say that capital A is equal to e to the c just for a bit of convenience. So we write then the general solution would be y is equal to a by e to the kx. Okay so we've got a general solution to the differential equation dy on dx equals ky. So what good is this? Where can we apply this? Okay so here's a good ecological example. A lake has become polluted with phosphates and an algae bloom begins to affect it. The algae cover only 1.5 square meters on October 3. They grow at a rate proportional to the quantity present. On October 15 they cover 4 square meters. 
use a differential equation to find an expression for the area covered at time t. How long will it take to entirely cover the 5 km square lake surface if growth continues in this fashion? So the first task is to find a differential equation. So let's let A equal the area covered at time t. So A is a function of t. So it's stated here they grow at a rate proportional to the quantity present. So the rate of change of the area, dA and dt, is proportional to the quantity present. So proportional to the area that's current. So this then translates to dA on dt, the rate of change of area, is equal to some factor, some growth factor, times the area. Okay, so this is looking familiar. We've got a differential equation of the form dy dx equals ky, but in this case we've replaced the y with a and we've replaced the dx with dt because it's a function of time rather than a spatial coordinate. Alright, so if we solve this differential equation we know that the form is going to be something like so instead of y now, we've got area equals some constant times e to the k. And since our independent variable is time, it's e to the kt. Again, so our dependent variable is the area. So we've got area as a function of time is equal to some constant times e to the growth factor times time. So I'm sorry to confuse you with the different lettering, but this is essentially of the same form as y equals a times e to the kx. Okay, this might be confusing, but this a is not the same as the area because the, our area here is the uh, dependent variable, is the function that we're uh, solving for. Uh, this is just a constant of integration, so we've um, replaced this a with c. So the constant of integration is c, not a. And our t corresponds to the x. So the question is not really to find a differential equation, is to find an expression for area at time t. Okay, so the second part of the question, how long till 5 square kilometers is covered? Okay, to solve this, initially when t equals 0, which is on the 3rd of October, the area was 1.5 meters squared. Later, so on October 15th, so that would be about, let's say 12 days later, on 15th of October, the area had grown to 4 square meters. So what this allows us to find then is the explicit solution or the unique solution because here we only have a general solution. So at time t, so a of 0, the area is equal to the integration constant times e to the k by 0. So this equals c times e to the 0. e to the 0 is equal to 1. So this just equals C, and the area then is equal to 1.5 meters squared. So we have C, the constant at the front, equal to 1.5. We also know then that at uh, 12 days, so A of 12, C was equal to 1.5, E to the K times 12, and the area then was equal to 4 square meters. So if we rearrange, we have e to the 12k is equal to 4 divided by 1.5. Taking the log of both sides, we get 12k is equal to, so the log of 4 on 1.5 is equal to approximately 0 0.981. So then if we divide both sides by 12, we get k equals approximately 0 0.082. 
So the explicit solution is a of t is equal to 1.5 e to the 0.082 times t. Okay, now finally, 5 kilometers squared is equal to 5 by 1,000 meters squared, which is equal to 5 million meters squared. So, if we have 5 million meters squared, given our equation, how long will it take to get there? So simply then rearranging for t, we've got e to the 0.082t equals 5 million divided by 1.5. And if we take the natural log of both sides, we get 0.082t equals approximately 15.02. And then solving for t, we get 15.02 divided by 0.082, which is approximately equal to 183 days, which is about six months. Okay, so we've covered in this video differential equations of the form dy dx is equal to ky, and we've also applied this to an ecological example to model the growth of algae. So I'll have more examples like this coming up. If you have found this video useful, please give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button for future videos that may help you in your studies. I'd appreciate any small donation or tip, and the details of how to do that will be in the description below. If you have any questions, please feel free to use the comments. Best of luck, and I'll see you on the next video.